Hello, good evening everyone and uh, good morning from here from the United States of America. Hopefully you're having a good evening and a good uh, course today. Uh, many great speakers uh, were presenting during the day. Hopefully you had uh, fun and a great knowledge, uh, I'm sure of that. This is uh, Dr. Tamer Deeb, I'm a prostodontist and today I'm gonna speak about the prosthetic understanding of uh, full mouth implant supported prosthesis uh, we need to uh, plan and visualize a comprehensive approach of understanding these cases and uh, how to uh, fully understand these cases if even before we starting uh, such a procedure most of the cases uh, we're going to see today uh, are a collaboration between me and my uh, lab ceramist uh, Guglielmo Prazzili from Milan, Napoli. And uh, I hope you're going to enjoy these cases. And uh, most of the information and knowledge we're going to provide today is uh, part of uh, what I teach in the university and as part of I teach with the British Academy of Implant and uh, Restorative Dentistry. Uh, and I hope I see uh, as many of you soon, inshallah, in uh, many different countries. We, op op we operate in uh, more than 11 countries with uh, more than uh, 1,700 dentists uh, already participated in our courses uh, uh, during the last years. So, I will start my lecture with a question, with a question, how often do you see this, okay, in your dental practice? This is a case, you can see a full mouth rehabilitation case uh, supported by implant. The implants are surviving, as you see, but this is a failure. You can see this is an aesthetic failure, this is a, an occlusal failure, this is a mechanical failure. So. Uh, you can see here we have an inverted uh, occlusal uh, plane and uh, inverted smile uh, uh, line, uh, bad aesthetics, uh, bad occlusion. Uh, the patient complained of inability of chewing and having a normal life. So though the implants are surviving, but here is another form of failure. And this form of failure we are seeing too much nowadays because we need we have good implant systems we have uh, an easy uh, process of osseointegration, integration but uh, we still uh, lack the good knowledge and uh, good education about prosthetic rehabilitation of such cases and uh, i i will say most importantly poor planning of such cases this is the main cause of failure but poor planning so uh, I would love to say that failure has too many forms okay and uh, most of this mechanical failure okay and we see it a lot as I said uh, because of dentists are applying the same prosthodontic principles uh, of natural teeth and they just take it as is and apply it to implant dentistry and this is not uh, correct regardless of the kind of uh, of prosthesis uh, regardless we are restoring with uh, uh, acrylic or porcelain fused to metal or uh, uh, zirconia okay nowadays we have different forms of mechanical failures that we see a lot especially with full mouth uh, implant supported prosthesis it's uh, well known for everyone that treatment planning is the key is the key of success of uh, uh, is the key for a successful uh, treatment and any kind of uh, treatment but unfortunately in implant dentistry and for full mouth rehabilitations in specific we do not have a specific protocol okay all of what we see we do not have an evidence based knowledge how to treat how to restore such cases and most of what we see and what we uh, read is a kind of, of uh, uh, practitioners uh, experiences okay so I'll try in my lecture today to have like a, a protocol how how to understand these cases how to think of each case and how to restore each case successfully uh, nowadays uh, we are lucky and unfortunately for the same time we have many options and uh, to restore 
uh, implant supported prosthesis for example you can support it with the uh, acrylic tinctures post suffused to metal you can use zirconia when we talk about zirconia you can do monolithic zirconia you can do cutbacks you can do full layer zirconia we have uh, hybrid prosthesis we have uh, different types of uh, glass infiltrated uh, like the beak or the picton uh, prosthesis so we have many different options to help us uh, restoring such cases but at the same time this uh, will also make the treatment difficult or it's difficult to choose between too many materials uh, for the dentist and uh, how to understand the right choice for such material let me start with such a case you can see here uh, i have uh, uh, an upper arch okay uh, most uh, of the teeth or maybe all of the teeth are indicated for extraction the same for the lower arch okay but uh, for financial reasons the patient decided not to restore the lower arch he said let's just start with the upper arch and I will do the implant now and maybe later I will go and restore the lower arch okay so what are the material of choice what is the best material I'm asking you what is the best material I can choose from to uh, restore the upper arch in such a case as I said you can do dentures you can do acrylic you can do zirconia and uh, each material will give you different strength and different aesthetics so i'm gonna ask you here what is the material of choice and remember always uh, finances will play a role the availability uh, of material the uh, skill of your dental technician so what do you think is the right material for this case okay so as i said many materials we can use but for me to restore this material i basically considered one thing the cost why because the patient is telling me that he cannot afford now for the time being to do the lower arch and you can see i have unstable occlusion okay you, you see a crossbite here um, a habitual protrusion of the uh, maxilla so in my decision for such a case i will go for the cheapest material why because i cannot build a an ideal occlusion so i told the patient okay let's go for a metal frame uh, supported acrylic denture and why this choice because i i i will consider this as a temporary treatment okay so uh, hopefully in the future when you can change the lower arch i can give you an ideal occlusion i can give you a better occlusion then we can shift to a stronger and more aesthetic material so in this uh, scenario we went to an immediate uh, acrylic metal frame supported uh, denture mainly because of the cost and the inability for me to give the patient an ideal occlusion so i prefer to wait not to spend his uh, money on uh, treatment that I might need to change later to adjust the occlusion so this will give you a hint how to understand the situation and how to think uh, before starting the uh, rehab how to think of the future and the importance of the occlusion plane and providing an ideal occlusion for such cases okay so for most of the cases and I will like to start here with such a simple case okay uh, this patient needs to uh, restore or to uh, implant one tooth i think this tooth will need an implant okay and uh, this might look easy okay i need to implant but uh, as we know implanting a central incisor not usually the easiest thing to do but uh, in this scenario for a single implant uh, restoration uh, I would love to show you how should I think with this uh, case okay so before you start any case you should start with a smile design and treatment planning and you can see I need to adjust the level of the central incisors okay you can see we have different levels here at the central incisor so 
we will need to do crown lengthening for the natural teeth and you can see i have a large uh, diastema here okay that also will make uh, my treatment or my decisions more difficult so i decided to veneer the adjacent uh, lateral incisors to enable to get uh, more control over the uh, case or the aesthetic uh, outcome so uh, here in such a case i need to adjust the uh, incisor level the smile line i need to distribute the spaces i need to close the diastema and i need to get the implant in the right position okay so always i start my case with a smile design and i evaluate such uh, a design with a mock-up with a silicon index and i can see here before starting the treatment that i have good outcome of my planning so before starting i ask my patient is this outcome is this satisfactory for you or we need to enhance something so the patient accepted this and i need to move this now into practice so what i will do i will test the occlusion is this results satisfactory do i have good anterior guidance the good posterior disclusion i need to test everything i need to test the phonetics the smile line uh, everything should be tested before starting the treatment okay and after that i will implement my uh, design here i'm using the r2 gate system okay and you can see we are using the uh, wax up or the digital uh, wax up and the digital design to plan the future uh, position of uh, my implants so i get everything in control before even starting the the treatment so you can see here the planning and the final uh, position of the implant uh, relying on the aesthetic smile design we did before so you can see we end this with this uh, r2gate guide to place my implant also I will use my uh, printed guide here to have a plastic sheet to guide me where to and how to cut the gingiva and to do the crown lengthening procedure. So using my smile design, I were, I was able to place my implant in the right position and I had the knowledge where to cut or where to make my cuts for the crown lengthening procedure. And you can see... Uh, we started with the crown lengthening, we made the cuts, then we extracted the tooth, we placed the implant guide, we placed the implant, and before, because this is a digital procedure, you can see that we have the temporaries are ready made even before starting the, uh, the treatment. You can see now we're filling, we're filling the gap and suturing uh, everything in place. What's interesting here is the accuracy, you can see the uh, before and after are exactly uh, typical to the design we, we did okay and everything was under control because of good uh, planning and good understanding of the case so this is a general uh, hint how to understand and how to read uh, such cases okay before you start with any case, uh, you need to know and to evaluate the success and the failure uh, factors that are in such uh, cases. So usually I divide my patients into a low risk, medium risk and high risk patients. Okay, it's very important to understand and change the patient's habits before uh, starting the treatment. Okay, patients with low risk factors are our favorite patients also the medium one but patients with with high risk uh, usually they are more susceptible and more prone to failure again even if you do uh, implant supported prosthesis we all know for example uh, if patients have uh, periodontitis usually he will end up with very implantitis so you need to evaluate the uh, success and failure and the risk uh, associated with this uh, uh, treatment before uh, starting the treatment okay so for the treatment planning for such cases I start with understanding the etiology and differential diagnosis of the case the space and I have and the dimensional requirements uh, for this case 
the number and position of the future implants? Can I go for guided surgery and immediate loading? Can I do this? Uh, what's the framework design for the final prosthesis? What is the material I'm choosing? And what is the uh, opposing arch material? Or do I have a natural dentition? And finally, how I'm going to do my occlusion. Okay, this is very important before starting the case. So first, understanding the etiology and the differential diagnosis, why the patient became edentulous, okay? And this is very important, okay? Usually, a uh, patient with uh, attrition, previously broken restorations, proxism, periodontitis are high risk patients, okay? And uh, for such patients, you, you, you will need okay a high strength ceramic material and you need uh, an a shock uh, absorbing uh, opposing arch uh, we need to control the periodontitis so for high risk patients okay uh, it will raise a question how to manage such cases okay it will be more difficult to understand uh, or to deal with such case uh, when we compare it to the medium and low risk patients. So whenever you see attrition, proxism, I'm, and I'm here talking about prosthetic, prosthetic uh, high risk uh, factors, okay? Previously broken uh, bridges or restorations, this will give you a hint, okay, we need to deal with such a case uh, differently, okay? So uh, as we know, proxism is unlikely to be a risk factor for the biological complications, okay? But it might be a risk factor for mechanical complications. And as, as I said today in this lecture, we're gonna focus on the mechanical complications of such restorations. The second thing we need to understand is on, when we uh, do the t our treatment planning, the space available for the future restorations okay the space and dimensional uh, requirements I, I i have okay so you can see here uh, if i'm gonna use a zirconia frame uh, supported restoration okay you can i'm gonna use a zirconia frame restoration first of all if I'm gonna do such a restoration, I will need 10 to 11 millimeter here, you can see, for the average length of central incisor, I need 10 to 11 millimeters. Then I will need two to three millimeters for the bank part. And I will need two millimeters here for the uh, implant uh, component. And I need the frame, okay, or the uh, transitional line between the gum and the frame, to be away from the smile line by three to five millimeter, okay? So uh, we can say if I want to do implant uh, zirconia frames and or zirconia frame supported rehabilitation, I need to have at least 12 to 16 millimeter, okay? You can see this. So if I, if I don't have such the space, okay, here, uh, as I said, 16 millimeter at least for the, such a restoration, you might consider another options or to do uh, ceramic restorations without bank part or to use another material. So it's very important to understand uh, how much space we have in order to give these beautiful uh, zirconia frame supported uh, prosthesis. They provide us with the strength and high aesthetics. How to understand this? Very simple. For any full arch uh, case, I deal with it as a complete dental patient. So I start with my uh, base blades and wax ups. And you can see here, the, uh, planning this case, we can decide the lip support, the smile frame, the incisal edge position, the vertical dimension. And it's very important, very important that these cases all we work at the centric relation we need to reorganize the occlusion and have it at the centric relation position so as we do with complete denture patients you design the case okay and we can evaluate the space we have okay we can evaluate the space we have using our uh, or utilizing these wax rims okay after that after placing the implants for example this is a uh, a low risk patients okay so we decided to go with uh, metal frame supported acrylic dentures they're gonna provide us uh, with high aesthetics and uh, good cushioning effects for uh, 
uh, double arches and at the same time high aesthetics and cheap cost okay uh, the trick in these restorations is the metal frame and especially the passivity of such frames okay so such cases can be we can deal with it easily if we can have passive uh, metal uh, uh, frames so you can see here uh, uh, we did use uh, printed uh, acrylic uh, material and now we are doing the we, we are checking the occlusion and uh, you can see such materials are very easy to use and will give you a uh, very nice and high uh, aesthetics results okay uh, what's what i do really like about these uh, restorations it's uh, they are very easy to fix for example if you have a fractured tooth or a fractured uh, 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 part of this full restoration they are very easy and cheap to fix also uh, I do understand most of these uh, one piece uh, restorations are not easy to clean but because it's a uh, screw retained restorations I also ask my patients to come every six months to uh, uh, to uh, clean uh, these rest uh, restorations and uh, screw them back uh, in place. Sometimes if we do not have uh, enough space, what we do, we do uh, surgical adjustment for the ridge. For example, if I need to contour my uh, emergence profile, you can nowadays, we are blessed having this digital technology, we can uh, guide uh, and we can uh, cut into the ridges and shape the ridge the way we want to do understanding and to provide the space as I said if you don't have uh, 12 or 16 millimeter to do the zirconia restorations it will be difficult so sometimes if I do not have a good vertical dimension uh, what I can do is to shape the ridge to have such a space another factor we need uh, to consider okay is the strength of the material we need to do or we need to uh, use okay so for example let's talk about this uh, nice uh, material okay every material has a uh, different behavior and function and uh, fractural uh, strength okay for example if i want to do zirconia frames restorations okay i need around the screw around uh, axis two millimeters at least all around the uh, axis screw for example for the connectors they should be at least seven millimeters anteriorly and nine millimeter posteriorly okay so uh, having having uh, a space or such a space is mandatory to uh, provide my patients with zirconia frame supported restorations okay now uh, if i have more space i will have much more options for example here i have good space as you can see posteriorly around the screws anteriorly okay so in such uh, a case i decided to use a, a glass reinforced polymers such as the beak or the bicton and these frames uh, the advantage of these uh, frames in my opinion what i like about these frames are their weight okay they are uh, they have uh, uh, they're much less uh, weight than the zirconia frames they are light and i can uh, load these frames with uh, emacs or uh, single zirconia restorations okay and you can see at the same time we have uh, highly aesthetic uh, uh, restorations that i can uh, fix and i can deal with easily again here the hygiene might be difficult and you need to emphasize the recall for uh, visits for the patient uh, what i need to do or what i need to understand before using uh, such restorations like the beak and the victim that i have i need more support i need more uh, space to provide the exact uh, strength for such uh, material for example in this beak we need at least 12 to 14 millimeter connector dimension so I can provide my patients with uh, such restorations okay now for full mouth uh, rehabilitations also it's a question how many implants I need and where to place my implants okay and to be honest this is a, 
dilemma and uh, this uh, topic is uh, you will have different opinions and different uh, factors okay regarding this the number and position of dental implants you will see uh, dentists doing full arch rehabilitations using uh, four implants and uh, some dentists they will prefer to use six or eight uh, implants to restore a full mouth to be honest i can say easily uh, you can do anything uh, it's case dependent i'm happy to use four implants to support a full mouth prosthesis and i'm happy to do eight if the patient or the case can afford uh, can afford this so this is how uh, i distribute uh, my implants generally speaking i would prefer to have the maximum anterior posterior spread i prefer to place one implant anteriorly as far as anterior as i can and two implants posterior as far posterior as i can okay then i prefer to place a safety implants for example if any of the implants fail i will have a safety implants helping me uh, not to lose the full case so you can see here i place one implant as a safety implant anteriorly and two implants as a safety implants posteriorly okay this is the basic distribution uh, for my uh, full mouth uh, implant supported cases but if the patients can afford and i have good bone uh, i can also minimize the bone tick numbers and uh, i can minimize the cantilever and the stress associated also placing another two implants so you can see this is how i think when i uh, distribute my implants one implant anterior as far anterior as i can two implants posteriors and three safety implants that's it if i can afford or the case can help me affording two implants more uh, to minimize the bone tick size and to minimize the stresses i will place another two implants but you can see you can uh, and we are able to provide full mouth cases using four implants very easy and how do we do this the same okay the same protocol the same procedure we start with the smile design designing the case evaluating the case inside the patient mouth if this design is satisfactory we're gonna send this to the uh, implant uh, uh, for example the r to gate system to uh, know the position and the ideal position of my implants and you can see here we use this design to uh, place four implants okay after that you can see this guide helped us to place four implants easily and uh, though we need to graph the area here okay uh, we're gonna end up waiting six months then placing uh, an acrylic supported with a metal uh, frame final prosthesis to be honest uh, i have this slide here to emphasize that though you can see most of the procedures uh, we did or i did in this uh, uh, seminar are digital okay for uh, implant or for full mouth supported prosthesis usually uh, we need a lot to do or a, a lot of uh, knowledge uh, to use the digital uh, uh, treatments or the digital concepts to uh, finalize the treatment okay so uh, i don't really like to use the intraoral scanners for full mouth uh, rehabilitation uh, impressions okay but if we did that okay you need to understand or to make sure that these metal frames are passive okay usually they will not come as passive as as we want so what we do is to cut these inside the patient mouth and re-weld them uh, to re-ensure the passivity okay once we ensure that we have a uh, passive prosthesis okay i will continue with the treatment as a full mouth or the full denture case very easy so as i said the difficulty of such cases is to plan the case okay make sure that the frame we have is is, is completely passive 100 percent passive and after that i will continue with the treatment like with complete denture uh, patients you can see here we are testing the results the vertical dimension the smell the smile line the phonetics the occlusion and you can see after we are sure of everything we can convert such restorations we can scan it and convert it into final uh, bmma material okay supported by metal frame on four 
implants okay and uh, why i do like bmma because of the uh, e they are easy to fix they they have uh, good support and they have they do good cushioning uh, effects for the final restorations and at the same time they will give you nice aesthetics you can you can see here we have nice aesthetics using only four implants okay so again you can see uh, that the trick of or the uh, the message i i want to give you is uh, first of all to understand the case to understand the uh, limitations we have the risk factors uh, again i'm talking here mechanically okay then uh, using digital planning to understand to place your implants so i'm i want to say that flapless guided surgery is the treatment of choice if there is no need for bone grafting or bone reduction during implant placement so whenever i have good ridge size i don't need to uh, bone graft good treatment planning you can see here uh, now we are lucky that we have this technology that we can do guided surgery easily and to understand the case completely before before even uh, having or doing any uh, flap so whenever possible i will do it guided okay and whenever possible i uh, i will do it uh, immediate okay uh, one note or something important to talk about that the surgical guide should be fabricated from the diagnostic wax up okay this is very important do not do your surgical guides from the patient existing dentition okay we need the surgical guides to be built on ideal occlusion and planning to our final uh, restoration so you can see we are using our uh, smile design our wax up our denture teeth to plan the uh, to guide us to the future implant uh, placement uh, position okay now for example if i have this case and you can see here we have a habitual uh, class d pro patient as i said before most of these cases we need to do we need to plan on a centric relation uh, position okay so i will start readjusting or reorganizing the occlusion and you can see here uh, this uh, wax up is my future uh, placement for the uh, teeth okay now uh, after having or discussing this treatment with the uh, patient okay i need to send this to my r gate system and now i'm using this uh, plan to uh, place or to uh, construct my uh, guided uh, my implant guide where and how i'm gonna place uh, my final implants now listen very important okay uh, it's i can do immediate placement okay immediate temporization whenever i have a medium and low risk patient okay i need uh, certain conditions okay e e to do so but i can summarize it that i need my implants to have at least 35 uh, uh, newton as a primary stability okay i need cross arch stabilization okay with the screw retained rigid prosthesis no cantilevers if i'm gonna do immediate restorations okay i need no premature occlusal context this is very important no lateral uh, interferences and i prefer to have uh, a, a canine guidance okay uh, and i need minimal horizontal and vertical overlap okay if i have all of these conditions available okay i'm happy to do or to immediately uh, load uh, my implants okay you can see here we started the case with uh, this guide the most important factor is to make sure this guide is, is stable okay very stable okay and you can see we are lucky because of this technology we are able uh, to easily place uh, eight implants uh, i think in less than uh, one hours in each uh, arch
Now, this is immediately after we are uh, done with the implant placement, and you can see we immediately took the uh, impression and immediately uh, placed a metal frame with acrylic supported, uh, uh, an acrylic supported uh, with the metal frame prosthesis. Okay. Now, the same uh, steps we do for, as I said, for the uh, single restoration or the complete denture patient, we need to make sure of the occlusion, the aesthetics, the function, the phonetics, I check all of this. And you can see here we did some welding for the case, okay, to ensure the passivity of my metal frame. Now, once I'm happy with this, okay, I'm happy to give the patient and immediately uh, loaded uh, provisionals, okay? Now, I, we needed to wait about six months, I think, or four months before finally loading the procedure. I have the frame ready, okay? The design of the frame already here, we have everything. And because we are in synthetic relation, okay, we decided to load this frame with a zirconia uh, layered uh, restorations, okay? And you can see we have a very nice aesthetic outcome, very nice uh, function, occlusion, okay? And you can see this is how we started the case and this is how we ended such a case, okay? There is no magic here, ju that just uh, good planning and good treatment uh, choices, okay? So, if we talk about, for example, about uh, zirconia, okay, uh, we need to understand that we can do zirconia in three different techniques. You can completely layer it for more aesthetics. You can do a uh, cutback technique. You can do monolithic zirconia restorations. And uh, what will tell you this is the risk factors. For example, for high risk patients, we will prefer to do monolithic zirconia. For medium risk patients, I will prefer to do the cutback uh, restorations, okay, to enhance the aesthetic. We will have the lingual side full in zirconia and the facial uh, side uh, completely layered, okay. But uh, for low risk patients, I, I might go for more layering and more aesthetic. So you need to understand the space and the risk factors for the uh, patients to know and to understand uh, which technique I'm gonna use to finish my restoration. So this is something to consider when dealing with uh, zirconia frame restorations. Uh, another thing or another option I would love to uh, point is using the zirconia frame. This is a nice option I, I, I actually love, using a zirconia frame that is supporting acrylic crowns, okay? Be a uh, methyl methacrylate acrylic crowns, okay? Why? Because here we are combining the strength of the zirconia, okay? And having at the same time very easy and cost-effective option, which is the PMMA crowns, okay? These are very uh, cost-effective. They are cheap. Uh, they are easily fixed. You can fix them using composites. So this option you might consider, uh, again, if you have... Uh, low risk and medium risk uh, patients, okay? They will give you nice aesthetics and uh, uh, nice and one more, more uh, cost effective uh, options, okay? And for example, uh, you can use this to cut the cost. For example, if you are having a full zirconia frame in the upper arch, you can use this, for example, for the lower arch or vice versa to have or to control the uh, forces we have in such uh, cases, okay? So, occlusionally, again, uh, I'm not afraid of the occlusion uh, when we talk about uh, biology and the bone loss, okay? But uh, usually occlusion will will uh, enhance, will will be accompanied, occlusional problems will be accompanied with uh, more mechanical, mechanical uh, issues and mechanical failure, okay? Please let me finish with the, with this case, okay? You can see here, again, a patient with periodontitis. Uh, you can see maybe this is the longest bridge I, I, I ever saw. Uh, the, we have a falling, uh, a failing dentition and uh, periodontitis and the teeth are needed for extraction, 
okay so you can see here that uh, this patient is uh, he 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 was on this uh, prosthesis for a long time uh, now and i need to adjust and make sure that my occlusion is perfect before proceeding to the final restoration so you can see here this is a very old case we did uh, uh, guide the treatment and we did place uh, six implants in each jaw and because we have good stability we decided to uh, send the patient home with a, a metal frame supported uh, denture and again if you want to do dentures you need to uh, do this on centric relation position and this is the most relaxed position to, uh, to the mandible uh, so the patient can have uh, a more uh, comfortable position and more support and good support uh, for the restorations with uh, less occlusion uh, issues okay so this is very important to reorganize the occlusion in such cases okay now the patient was on these stems for i think for four or, uh, or five months okay and this was uh, he was satisfied with the results both aesthetically and occlusion okay so in order to transfer this and as i said this is an old case i need to scan this nowadays but uh, at that time we did uh, make an impression for the denture so our lab technician nowadays can duplicate the biological borders of my previous restoration okay so we did the impression and uh, we decided to go for a uh, zirconia frame layered restoration okay so you can see this is the uh, wax up this is the silicone index and my uh, lab ceramist need to fill the gap here with the zirconia and ceramic uh, restoration okay so before proceeding to the final restorations we started uh, testing this with polymethyl methacrylate restoration this is the tri end and now i need to check the phonetics the occlusion the everything before proceeding to the final one so you can see here the patient is happy and satisfied with the uh, polymethyl metacrylate restorations okay we scan this now and we ask the lab to duplicate this so you can see this is a full zirconia frame and we decided to lower to layer this frame why to have more aesthetics the patient occlusion and synthetic relation which is the most relaxed position the patient is a low risk uh, patient okay so i'm happy to do a fully layered restoration and you can see the final aesthetics come how how nice and how beautiful are my final uh, restorations and to have this uh, long lasting uh, again we need long lasting and highly aesthetic restorations i need to make sure i have perfect occlusion i have perfect occlusion and you can see this uh, x-ray i think one year or two years uh, immediately after the uh, implant placement okay this is how we started the case and this is how we ended the case so uh, this was fast hopefully uh, we're gonna see you soon inshallah uh, in libya in iraq be in different places uh, uh, and in person <laughs> in person please feel free to contact me or to ask me anything yeah, you need about this topic or any other topic thank you all for uh, attending this and uh, hopefully we'll meet uh, each other very soon have a good night